bring in CNN legal analyst Shan Wu to talk about these developments. He's a defense attorney and former federal prosecutor. Uh, Shan, thanks so much for joining us. Now, if Brett Kavanaugh is confirmed tomorrow, this court will move further to the right. So what issues this session will you be keeping your eye on? Well, I think not only is it moving to the right, but it effectively eliminates the swing vote. And I think front and center, what we want to watch for is, frankly, whether there'll be a frontal assault on overturning Roe versus Wade. Now, it makes sense that these may come not so much in a direct assault on it, but in minor restrictions that'll happen. And basically, you'll look for states to be more bold in their restrictions on abortion and look for the court to essentially back that up. Um, other issue, uh, very high on the priority list, would probably be the affirmative action issue. And the court will be looking at probably limiting um, that sort of effort that has gone on in the past. I think generally in terms of um, the issue of gay marriage, I don't think that's going to take a frontal assault. But there's probably going to be more, again, aggressive test cases for different businesses, as we saw in the baking case. Um, different business owners may try to take a stand that they have a right to essentially discriminate against gays. But I think the marriage aspect itself um, should be safe. Uh, and the only other area that could be a hot area might be for the uh, campaign finance issues. I'm sort of further loosening any scrutiny on that. Okay, so that gives, us, <laughs> that gives us a good broad overview. Uh, since the issue at hand this past week was the sexual assault allegations, should Brett Kavanaugh recuse himself from assault cases or anything dealing with women's reproductive rights? And do you expect him to recuse himself? I would not expect him to recuse himself. The, the whole recusal issue um, for U.S. federal judges is very much dictated by their own conscience. Now, on the Supreme Court, it's possible that other justices might apply some pressure. Certainly, the Chief Justice is always going to be very concerned with the court's public um, impressions. And so if there was a case where they felt that he might need to recuse, he might face some internal pressures. Frankly, that's far more likely if there's a politically hot case because part of the controversy over his confirmation hearings was the fact that he was very openly partisan, uh, even to the extent of you know looking like he was attacking um, the Democrats and liberals. So I think that could be a concern. But that's very much left up to the individual judges whether to do that. I think from the court's point of view of its place in the American consciousness, there's a concern there. Um, I think there's going to be huge backlash that these allegations of sexual assault seem to have been ignored. That's going to be the impression of many activists, many women. And of course, it's particularly ironic that today the Nobel Peace Prize was awarded to activists against sexual violence. So I think that's a fascinating juxtaposition. Yeah, uh, th that's a great contrast. Um, the FBI report that was delivered to the senators, it, it was never going to be a win-win because someone was going to be unhappy. But they didn't interview Kavanaugh or Ford. And one thought is maybe the White House didn't want Kavanaugh be, to be interviewed because if you change your story with the FBI, that's a big problem. I mean, is that a big hole in your view in trying to get all of the information? And, and were you surprised that they didn't interview the, the two key players? I, I was surprised that the overall impression of that FBI investigation, and we don't know for sure, but it has been told uh, through sources that it sounds as though the White House, in particular Don McGahn, had a lot of direction about that. And it's important, again, to remember that for a background investigation to be effective, it needs actually to be very wide-ranging. It's not as tightly focused as a criminal investigation. And it's wide-ranging because you're trying to give the potential employer, in this case the White House, any potentially negative information. But of course here, the White House wasn't really interested in seeing any potentially negative information. So it really set up the investigation not to be very thorough mm -hmm. to begin with. And now looking at it in 2020 hindsight, it really may have been something which was done really to give the Republican members of the committee and of the Senate um, some cover. They could look at the investigation and say, oh, nothing new came up. I can vote with a clean conscience. But again, if you can control who you're going to ask the questions to, and if they didn't re-interview Dr. Ford, they didn't re-interview the judge, there are numerous witnesses that got named that were not interviewed. If you can control who to question, then you can really affect the outcome of the investigation.
And we know that that already is a point of contention. Sean, thank you so much for joining us. Sean Wu, CNN Legal Analyst.